Welcome to this referral associate training video put on by Captive Experts. I'm Tom Cefeli, the Managing Director of Captive Experts. I'm an attorney. I practiced other professions during my career, including public accounting as a financial auditor and tax accountant. Uh, what I'm going to share with you today is um, basically what, what we expect the referral associates, how we compensate them, uh, what kind of client companies captive insurance companies make sense for that they should introduce them to and then also touch on the IRS uh, audit activity initiatives going on today because it's always of uh, significant importance to both clients and professional advisors. Our referral associate program um, is open to lawyers, accountants, financial advisors, RIAs, insurance brokers and consultants and the like who have successful uh, business clients who could benefit by captive insurance companies. Our compensation structure is pretty straightforward and simple and we require it to be transparent. Um, first, they do not impact client costs on any and all of our engagements, whether or not we're um, sharing some of our fees with referral associates who assist in client education and in developing the project successfully for clients. We don't charge more for that. We don't have a multi-tiered structure, as do others in the industry. We offer uh, best practice compliant programs at, at the best reasonable fees possible, whether or not uh, there is a referral associate involved. Most of our referral associates uh, do not want to participate in our fees. They uh, perceive that as a conflict of interest with, with their clients, but some do. So for those that do, we offer a very straightforward fair compensation program. On your first two client referrals, we'll pay 10% of our turnkey fees and we'll pay 10% of any risk pooling fees to the degree that's applicable in a client design. If you're an active referral associate and you have captive expertise and you're sharing that with your client base, uh, we'll negotiate a different arrangement because at that point, you should be a, a, a deeply value added partner for both us and, and the client uh, satisfaction and results with their CIC programs. All referral associates are independent contractors. We don't um, require anything of them. We do have a written agreement arrangement with them, but we, we don't restrict their outside activity, including competing with us in provision of services to clients. The type of companies that CICs can help today um, is very broad. We feel professional advisors need to increase understandings of captives, and we feel they would be professionally uh, remiss in not bringing captive solution opportunities to their client base. The companies we find benefit uh, most greatly by captives and where they make sense for them are companies that have over a million dollars in commercial insurance expense. Usually, uh, that's an aggregate, too, between all lines of commercial coverage. Also, companies that have significant self-insured risk exposures that are causing them concern and problems. Uh, companies that are facing potential litigation risks or historical litigation and the like, where it impacts their uh, working capital and other reserves, a captive can be an excellent vehicle for uh, helping these companies. There's also potential third-party risk programs or lines of coverage could um, be provided by a captive an affiliated captive company in the areas of tenant insurance, extended warranties for customers, uh, employee benefits, and other types of, of coverages, which really are, are underutilized in the marketplace. With respect to, you know, the impact of the IRS on captive arrangements and client um, concerns about that, uh, we're going to share a little information on what's going on today and, and historically. Historically, and by that I mean for you know the past 30 to 50 years, the IRS uh, routinely was challenging captive arrangements. They were only utilized by Fortune 500 and Global Concerns at that time, but the IRS used the economic family theory doctrine that was developed in the courts, arguing that you know these captive arrangements were not really arm's length transactions. You have one company paying premiums to an affiliated company, in a lot of cases a subsidiary of a holding company. And they just felt that they should not be uh, currently deductible uh, as ordinary business expenses. 
because the IRS lost those arguments in a series of cases, which you, you can find some information on, on our websites and elsewhere on the, on the internet today, the IRS in 2001 changed its position and they um, abandoned their economic family doctrine that the courts didn't agree with. And in 2002, the IRS adopted a series of uh, revenue rulings, which have been used as foundational guidance for the growth in the captive industry, especially by smaller and companies today. Um, recently, uh, by that, it's 2014 right now, August of 2014, but earlier this year at various American Bar Association uh, tax meetings, IRS counsel um, have indicated that they understand captives are very beneficial to smaller businesses today and that pooling arrangements are required in most of those arrangements, but they're just concerned that the uh, industry practice standards are, are not being followed um, throughout the industry and they, and they want to make sure that people are not creating and utilizing captives other than for uh, risk management objectives. For example, um, one of the associate counsels with the IRS um, said it at that conference that the government is, you know, walking a thin line because they're not trying to chill legitimate captive uh, activity and formation, but at the same time, um, they're concerned that there may be abuses out there that they, they would like to um, see curtailed. We find um, or expect that because of the widespread use of captives today, not just in the U.S., but abroad, and uh, with 30 plus states now authorizing captives, which is a recent phenomenon since the 90s, that there's going to be increased collaborative or efforts between government agencies, service providers, and captive owners aimed at improving captive insurance standards. We expect that to begin later this year and last for several years. We expect the industry to continue to grow. Uh, we just expect service providers to have to do, um, if the service providers that aren't doing an excellent job, to um, do a better job. Why is there a growing interest? Um, we have other video segments that dwell on that in, in great detail, but let's just summarize them briefly for you referral associates who are newer to this industry. One, you need to understand the interest is global in captives. Um, you know, 30 years ago, all captives were formed offshore. Most of them were owned by non-U.S. companies. Today, most formations are occurring uh, in the U.S. because of the adoption of captive programs by smaller companies. But the growth is um, occurring in Latin America, Pacific Rim countries, uh, Japan recently had some of their first uh, closely held company captive formations, and that trend's going to continue. Primary goal and greatest benefit of captives, of course, is improving risk management. And enterprise risk management is itself a rapidly emerging science. Evidence of that is the fact that chief risk officers didn't exist 10 years ago, and now most uh, sophisticated large companies have a CRO as part of their executive team, and more and more Successful privately held businesses are also hiring risk officers as part of their teams. That's the end of this introductory uh, referral associate training uh, video. We hope this has been helpful to you. If you have questions or want to join our referral associate network, please contact me. My phone number and cell phone number is here on this slide. I'd be happy to help you in any way I can. I'd be able to, happy to help you introduce captives to your clients. And uh, we look forward to this industry continuing to grow and helping strengthen more and more U.S. businesses.